एवरीबॉडी आई एम शोमू कांडिगिरी वेलकम टू आवर चैनल सो टुडे लाहौन वन ऑफ माय जूनियर फेवरेट जूनियर हैज जॉइंड विथ अस फ्रॉम अहमदाबाद ओके ही इज करेंटली परसुइंग पीएचडी इन फार्माकोलॉजी एंड टॉक्सिकोलॉजी फ्रॉम नाइपर हम अहमदाबाद ओके ही इज जीपैट ही इज नाइपर जेई फॉर पीएचडी रैंक वाज 14 ही इज जीपैट ही हैज डन ही हैज कंप्लीटेड योर एमएस Uh, in pharmacology and toxicology from Naipur Mohali with AIR your um, that 69 69 69 okay so uh, and his GPAT rank was 462 okay so that's uh, a brief introduction about himself that is quite little okay so now um, welcome uh, my channel okay thank you it's my pleasure to be with you all and thank you Shomoda for this opportunity to interact with our juniors. and to guide them in each possible way okay thank you thank you lahonno so lahonno has joined with us today for uh, discussing uh, the naipur je phd exam okay naipur je exam for phd specifically for pharmacology and toxicology okay so my first question to lahonno is how did you prepare yourself for naipur je phd exam okay okay so the thing is first we have to understand the thing that Naipa JE PhD exam is quite different than the masters exam because in bachelor what we do we study all the subjects whether that be pharmaceutical chemistry pharmaceutics uh, pharmacology so there things are versatile and in case of Naipa JE masters we give exam on all those subjects but in case of Naipa JE PhD there are basically three categories one is uh, chemical science one is uh, pharmaceutical science and my exam that i cleared was biological science uh, in biological science the students from biotechnology pharmacy practice and pharmacology they are eligible and for chemical science uh, the students of natural products and medicinal chemistries are eligible and in case of pharmaceutical science uh, the students from synthetics and analysis they are eligible uh, so the thing is uh, this year our exam was conducted by naipur hyderabad um for the past 3 years from 2019 to 2021 there was naipur ahmedabad actually 2018 to 21 so their examination pattern was different so what i have learned throughout this journey of my masters and phd that's in case of phd uh the depth camera that we started to build up when we were in third year or fourth year like reading line by line from Uh, KD Tripathi or those books that is not that much necessary for the PhD exam. For the PhD exam, your strategy should be to work smart instead of working hard. Um, for one book, uh, I would really recommend for this uh, sharp and short time preparation uh, because in the life science category, the eighty percent questions will be from this pharmacology chapter only. and rest 20% will comprise of some basic biotechnology and even some pharmacy practice questions uh, for pharmacology i would really recommend a book called uh, review of pharmacology by sparsan gupta uh, actually i personally followed that book uh, in phd preparation because it has every chapter in forms of a mnemonics there will be a lot of mnemonics in this books so in short time you can have a greater amount of knowledge and i what i found in this book that was unique than other college books that after every chapter you study there will be around 100 to 200 mcq that will be specifically for this chapter so what i did i went thoroughly through that book i studied uh, every mnemonics i tried to remember i tried to make notes from that and after i you know completed that part suppose i i started with the general pharmacology then i would get the opportunity to practice and to sharpen my knowledge on that specific domain by attempting those mcqs and that's how i build my basic in such a short time because i hardly prepared for a month for this phd exam so and the thing that i also noticed that compared to masters the question pattern of i can say was very mediocre actually because if there if you are you know studied for only 
days and you don't have that much concept you just know the basic things you can very easily you know answer the question like uh, this year in biological science in case of pharmacology the questions were very basic like uh, they were from basic adverse drug reaction some symptomatic questions like uh, redman syndrome was done by which like vancomycin this kind of direct questions from classifications were there uh, like uh, these drugs belongs to which class which are very easy to crack uh, what i found unique in this exam compared to the masters and my gpad that here uh, basically they don't do not only wants to you know uh, know about your practical theoretical knowledge but also practical knowledge uh, like what you have learned in the two years where you were doing the masters so because that the skills that you learned are the most important thing that you are gonna apply in your phd so they also want to check that also so i got many many questions from you know the basic techniques basic molecular biological techniques that a pharmacologist student should learn like rt pcr western blotting um there there was you know some questions from microscopy also like you can't you know answer those questions if you just read about the theories but you also have to know about the troubleshooting of those techniques like only then you can be able to answer those questions so those questions really show how you know determined and how skillful you are uh, for for your for your exam and i would for the preparation i would just say go very relax just to follow the book just time to time you don't need to work for 10 to 12 hour just if you work effectively for 1 to 2 hours that is sufficient and along with the books i must say there are many great channels one of them uh, is shomya of course he is also uh, giving some Thanks. valuable lessons uh, to through his channel so there will be many more channels very famous ones like gpat discussion center okay. pharma cognize uh, like uh, there is one channel called Vikas Bopinwar. So this kind of channel, like for analysis, there is one channel. I am big, even though I am pass out from biological science, but for analysis, I would really recommend uh, Dr. Pius Jaiswal. There is a very good uh, channel. So I also, you know, prepared the, from those videos, just cleared my basic, and that was all it was necessary to crack the exam. You mentioned Sparsan Gupta, okay? So the book written by Sparsan Gupta. So what are the other books you studied? Uh, see, uh, because as I also said before that Naipar PhD exam is quite different than Naipar master's exam. Because here in life science, there 80% will be from ecology. So according to me, this Pars Gupta book, uh, as I started reading chapter by chapter, as I discovered in this book, there there is a lot of mnemonics and lot of tables and the facts that are prevalent like vital drug and drug interactions some vital special points about some drug that that you generally get after reading a lot of and spending a lot of time in others books it was given as a point so it helped me immensely to build up my concept that i acquired in you know when i started preparation for gpat and niper masters because I al already remembered those things, but I need some book to just furnish up those memories again. And this book really helped me. But if you want uh, to go for knowledge that's very, you know, justifiable, then I would say along with this book, this book is must, this person Gupta. Along with that, uh, you can go for KD Tripathi. You should go for the pharmacological classifications, general pharmacology all those things and if you want to know from more depth in pharmacology i but i think you should done these things in your masters Master. uh, you 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 should go for rang and dell also but according to me uh, don't put that much time in you know theoretical aspects because niper phd selection process is entirely different than masters because there you cannot guarantee a good rank even after you get good rank in the theoretical part because 60 percent of the weightage will be from the theoretical part that's true but rest 40 percent will be from the interview because in phd 
they want to check your interaction skills, their communication skill, and their ability to solve basic real life problems. So that's why, you know, there will be, as I did, you know, appeared for pharmacology, there were seven faculty members for seven distinct snipers. And I was asked to explain my project thoroughly with each steps and each details that I have done. Then they cross questioned me about my project, like, uh, you know, like what we I could have used instead or what else approach should I use this alternate kind of thing because like uh, I have done one test in one disease. So the, their question was like what else you could have done if you didn't have this chemical. So by these questions, they want to know how critically you can think because in India to do research you have to have that mindset you are not gonna always get the facilities or maybe the machine will be you know not working or maybe there will be the scarcity of chemical you can never know, can know. so how can you you know uh, adjust in this kind of situation because for phd it's a according to me it's a journey of five years and you are gonna learn so much so don't take it as a job those who want to appear for phd uh, so that's my request to you. Just uh, go for the, the book, but also put focus on this your communication skills and your really go through your project that I must say, because those interview marks will decide in which sniper you will go apparently for PhD. So Lahun, no, which are the most important topics an aspirant should never miss from pharmacology? Okay, so first of all, from pharmacology, uh, you have to go through the major chapters. As I said in Sparsan Gupta, that book, everything is written very concisely and uh, very mnemonically that you can remember very easily. First, you will be starting from the uh, basic pharmacology. Uh, from there, we will be focusing on the various uh, drugs that will go for metabolism. Uh, there will be drug absorption, those kinds of things. Uh, which kind of drugs like show zero order kinetics, first order kinetics, those kinds of basic things that you need to understand. And basically you have to focus a lot on, you know, the nervous system related diseases. Because in Naipur Hyderabad, the, you know, the neuro department or the neuro division is very good. They, are, they also work on cancer biology, pulmonary fibrosis and all those things. Because whatever the sniper who is hosting this exam, they will, you know, em put emphasis on those parts which has been, you know, done in their lab. So yeah. you have to, because this year sniper Hyderabad is also uh, conducting the exam. So I would suggest, uh, you know, study those, uh, you know, adrenergic, cholinergic system, anti-Parkinson, those neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. And there are very much other diseases like you you need to understand and uh, also put other you know topics uh, like uh, antibiotics that is a very important topic and uh, i would say anti-epileptics those kinds of things uh, you can skip the you know the last kind of parts like vaccines and seras like there will be vitamins so that's not that much uh, necessary if you have time you can go for it but I would just uh, say that you should stick to the main chapter and along with that, I will suggest like uh, go through the animal models uh, because I we all got a lot of questions from the animal models itself and there was also question from behavioral test that we, you know, perform in case of uh, the locomotor assessments and those things. So these kind of practical questions will also be there. And apart from the ecology, the other 30 percent was from different things from biotechnology they ask basically from basic uh, techniques like rtpcr western blotting like practical techniques like if you see this yeah not not like theoretical there was theoretical question mainly from pharmacology uh, like uh, and in case of pharmaco uh, you know pharmacy practice in case of pharmacy practice uh, you don't need to so you know consult any book or anything i would just suggest it's just a lottery if you know you will answer otherwise don't answer these parts because these are not our expertise uh, if you know only then you answer you can consult youtube videos for pharmacy practice but i don't really recommend 
uh, going for this part. If you, you know, have your pharmacology and biotechnology well prepared uh, through systematic manner, I am very much sure that you will uh, crack this theoretical part. And if you have good communication skills and really you are, you know, interested for that PhD position, then you should also have those uh, critical thinking skills that that will you know make you flourish through the interview so i think this is uh, the general my journey uh, that i prepared for uh, naipa je phd and that's it so lahunno my last question to you that what should be the preparation strategy for naipa je aspirants phd aspirants okay so as i said earlier that uh, you first of all you have to be relaxed because uh, the, the the questions will be from very basic background so if you study the book and if you know the classification system some basic adverse drug reactions and some basic drug drug interactions and if you have good knowledge in the general pharmacology part you are more than eligible to you know complete those part see i am not going to impose one particular schedule because everyone grows at their own pace to me they are thinking capability they are you know taking to grasp things are different but one thing i just want to discuss that you have to be yourself and you have to believe in yourself first you have to think that why you have chosen the path of phd if you have chosen the path to pursue phd it means you have that you know hunger to explore new science to explore the translation and research that will you know serve our country because to me Uh, being a scientist is as important being an army man because both are serving their country with all they have with sacrificing their family their personal time all the uh, countless efforts that they put in is for the benefit of the general people so you also have to have that mindset otherwise you are not mentally fit to be a phd student that will be keeping you motivated and that will rush you through all this kind of preparation process of cracking the theoretical exams and also the interview process and the last thing that i want to say if you don't get by any chance don't think that you are not worthy you are worthy because you have chosen this path of sacrifice of pursuing the phd and i know that you there is some place for you that will acknowledge your research skills and you are you will be more than happy to join there so this kind of mindset should be there that if there is failure we should not give up and we should try again so and this is the message that i would like to give to my juniors who are preparing for the exam so lahun no thank you very much for joining with us okay yes. for giving you your valuable time to me okay so uh, thank you everyone for thank you thank you video. so this is the end of our video hope all of you like the video please like subscribe our channel thank you